Welcome to Young. I'm Pastor Gio, and I'm so excited to be back here with you. Have you ever fought with your friends about the things you don't think the same way about? Well, everybody is different, and not everyone has the same opinions. But have you ever changed your mind about something after somebody tells you that you are wrong? Ooh, at first it, it didn't feel good, right? But then after that, you realize you learned something new. But what happens if someone tells you to change the way you think about the world and to change the way you live? you would be confused, right? But what if I told you that by changing the way you think, you can find out what God has planned for you? Let's check this video out before we do. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for today. We are excited. We're grateful for you, Lord. We're grateful to receive your word. We thank you for our friends and family. Bless this country. In Jesus' name, everyone say, Amen. The Bible. It's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Romans, chapter 12. Verse 2. If there was ever a man who thought he knew how to think the best thoughts, it was Paul. As a Jewish religious leader, Paul knew all the 613 Jewish laws inside and out. He was convinced he knew the exact right way to live. But then Paul met Jesus in a flash of light and thunder, and everything flipped. Paul's entire way of thinking changed. Jesus is the Son of God. Paul began to travel across the land, starting churches as he shared the amazing news about Jesus. He also wrote long letters, both to the churches that he had started and to ones that he had heard of or wished to visit. I, Paul, am writing this letter. Many of Paul's letters are collected in the New Testament, including a famous letter he wrote to the church in Rome. I long to see you. I want us to encourage one another in the faith we share. In his letter to the Romans, Paul shares the truth about what God has done for us in sending Jesus and how that can change our lives. Romans 12.2 offers a big challenge. Don't live the way this world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Then you will be able to test what God wants for you, and you will agree that what He wants is right. His plan is good and pleasing and perfect. Paul knew all about having a mind makeover, but changing your thoughts isn't easy. Whatever you do, don't think about an elephant. Do not think about an elephant. You're thinking about an elephant. It's really hard to control your thoughts. When Paul says, don't live the way this world lives, he's saying, don't let this world push you into thinking and saying and doing things. Imagine that you're modeling clay. Modeling clay can be turned into all sorts of cool stuff, like this, or this, or even this. The problem is, no matter how much you shove it around and shape it, modeling clay doesn't form anything that lasts. And we all know how modeling clay ends up. Mixed up, dried up bits. We can get squashed too when we let the world around us tell us how to act, what to say, what to wear, what to play. We run from one thing to the next without stopping to think about what really matters. That's why Paul reminds us next, let your way of thinking be completely changed. We all know it's really hard to change your thoughts just by trying hard. Yeah, there's only one way to make lasting change, and that's to let God work in your thoughts as well as in your heart. Imagine this is your brain, and throughout the day, it begins to boil with a gazillion thoughts. Oh, why do I have to get up now? I hate school. I can't believe I have Miss Wells this year. She's the most boring teacher ever. Everyone else has a better lunch than I do. I can't run a whole mile in P.E. It's not fair I have to finish my homework before I can play my game. You can make all those thoughts change in an instant, but you can invite God to begin to change those thoughts for you. And as you spend more time focused on God's words written down in the Bible and spend time with others who follow God, your thoughts will begin to shift. 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Don't worry about anything. No matter what happens, tell God about everything. God's peace will watch over your hearts and your minds. I am absolutely sure that not even death or life can separate us from God's love. Over time, new thoughts will replace the old anxious ones. God will begin to change you from the inside out. Now, you're no longer modeling clay. Instead of being pushed around from the outside, you have a brand new way of thinking. Paul writes, Then you will be able to test what God wants for you, and you will agree that what He wants is right. His plan is good and pleasing and perfect. When something difficult happens, you can stand strong and ask God to show you what to do and what to say. And the more you invite God to change what's happening in your head, the more you grow day by day in wisdom. Wow, you see, Paul wrote a letter to the Romans to change the way they think about the world and change the way they live. He said only then will they find what God has planned for them and they will agree that what God wants is right and good. His plan is truly good, pleasing and perfect. We have to put faith in Jesus so that He can change us, not just the way we think and live, but also grow in our relationship with Him. It will mature in how we see the world and become wiser and wiser. Today's key passage is taken from Romans 12 verse 2. It says, Do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Great job, kids! It's quiz time! Are you ready, kids? Let's get right into it. Who wrote the book of Romans? Paul or John? That's right, it's Paul. What did Paul want the people of Rome to change? Change the way they dress or the way they think? Yep, you got it. He asked them to change the way they think. What did Paul write? Songs or letters? That's right, he wrote letters. Great job, kids. Well, that's it for today, kids. Thank you for spending your Sunday with us. Remember, we have our weekly contents on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and we'll see you in our Zoom later this afternoon. Before we go, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your wisdom. We thank you for today's message. We thank you for our friends. Bless our class. In Jesus' name, everyone say, Amen. Bye, kids.